add multiple users. This is where we were yesterday. And I said that uh, multi factor authentication, that's what's called MFA for short, is actually used as a second layer security. So we'll get here when we get to identity. So we may not necessarily be looking at MFA for now. So uh, going to delete user, this is just for us to delete this users. Let's say, yes, let's say we have this test user. We can just come up here and we'll click on delete. Uh, or, okay, when you hit on delete, actually it will give you yeah, we selected. There are two ways to do it. So you can either first of all select the user, uh, and then you delete. Let me mute you because you're making. So um, you can either select the user, and then click on delete. So when you want to delete it, it tell you that you want to that you can restore deleted user and other data for up to thirty days after you delete them. So data on their on their connected device will be removed and will uh, and uh, as as well as the following. So what it means is that M365 E5 developer, this license will be unassigned from the user. All licenses that you assign to the user will automatically be removed and then you can delete a user. So here is for 30 days, this user is going to remain in deleted user list. So this delete that you are doing at this point is called soft delete. So after 30 days, the user can now hard delete. So there are two ways you want to delete a user. You can either decide to soft delete a user that is deleting and the user remains for 30 days before it permanently get deleted, or you can delete the user in the two stages, one from here, and then the second deleting uh, to hard delete from the identity admin center. So I just want us to click delete now for us to deal with. So before I do that, there's what is called, this user has no alias. I will explain alias when uh, I think I should explain alias now. So alias is like the alternative email address. So for example, um, let's say you are paul at gmail.com and then I want to say, if you also send email to peter at gmail.com, it should get delivered to paul at gmail.com. That is the alias. So let's just look at this place. So it's saying removing aliases from this user allowed them to be giving other users. I mean, yeah, removing alias so that if this user has an alias, you can remove the alias. I'm sure I should show you alias after number. That's what alias actually means. <clears throat> And then mailbox delegation permission will be removed. That is, if this user, some people have access to this user mailbox, some people may have permission to access this, this user's mailbox, including the ability to view and manage emails and send email on their behalf. So if there are people who were given this permission to send email on behalf of this person or send email as this person, which we are still going to see later, it will also be removed. So if this user has content in his OneDrive, then it will say give another user um, the delegate, give another user OneDrive access to this. I mean, give another user access to this user's mailbox for 30 days after the user is deleted. So this user does not have OneDrive provision. That is why this is not activated. So if this user has content in his OneDrive, I can give his OneDrive access to someone for another 30 days, even after this user is deleted. Then if I want to give another user access to this user's mailbox, as I want to delete the user, so I can just do here, require give email access to another user. So I will just give access to another user to his mailbox. I will search for the user here, and then that user, this email will saved as shared mailbox and available to the other user you select. So you can manage shared mailbox by going to this. So what this does is that this user is going to be deleted, yes. But if you are going to delegate the access, if you want to give another user access to this user's mailbox, then the mailbox by itself will be converted to a shared mailbox. And then that user or those users that you are going to select, of course you can select more than one user. You will select a single user to 
get email, but you can add more people later. Now, users must have a license that includes Exchange Online. That is the user you are delegating access to this user's mailbox. Then the user you select will get an email with instruction to access the shared mailbox, but they, but they can read and send mailbox from it. So let's say I am adding Joseph to be able to have access to this guy's mailbox. That is if he even has mailbox content at all, then that is how I will do it. So I will just set all of this thing, choose the display name for the shared mailbox. So it is saying that I should use the current display name test user one, or I can create another user, can create another name for it. So that if that guy is seeing this mailbox, you should know that it is shared user, is uh, test user one shared mailbox that is using. So it's okay to be like this. If I want to change the name, of course I can do it this way. So now how we hit on next, then this is asking if I want to do automatic reply. Thank you for contacting MSFT for regarding the information of the user one. He is no longer employed here. Please direct any future correspondence to Joseph, who is now the delegator of this board. He's going to get that email that is coming from this person. This is not automatically, automa this is not automated reply for your convenience. This email has not been automatically for that no this is an automatic email automated email right so for your convenience this email has been automatically forwarded to this person but if you want to if you want to send emails in the future it is telling you that instead of sending it to this guy send it to joseph directly but the email that you are trying to send to this guy has been automatically forwarded to joseph so you can try this all this out in your own personal laboratory so email only for people outside the organization email for people inside and outside the organization. So it depends on what you want to do. So reply with different message. If you want to type different message for different people, you can reply with a different message for people outside the organization. So you can just do the same email for both people call, uh, sending email from outside and those that are sending email from inside. So this is about delete the email, the email alias. Yeah, so select next to continue this user has no email alias definitely so this is just giving a summary so i want to transfer the ownership to to joseph so the ownership of this mailbox has been moved now to joseph and we can say assign and convert so as it is converting this mailbox to a shared mailbox then joseph is going to get email that he has been given access to test user one shared mailbox when this mailbox is fully converted so is uploading or updating uh, the automatic reply now please don't close until we finish converting this user mailbox to shared mailbox so it's just converting now so that is how it is done so user one has been converted that is the mailbox so you close right and then test user one has been converted so the next thing you do you can just go ahead now and delete and just delete the user now that the mailbox has been you know you cannot call you are you sure you want to delete this user yeah all those ceremonies are over so you can click on delete a user so i'm just trying to show you the steps of deleting this user so test user one has been deleted you can restore this test user one to recover data for 30 days right there are data except for calendar item and aliases that cannot be you know so for up to 30 days from deleted user, so you can click on deleted user here to go there, or you can come here and then you are going to see the user under deleted users listed here as a deleted user. So what you can do is to either export the deleted users or you can decide to now restore this user back to active user. So sometimes you may want to permanently delete this user. How do you permanently delete a user? So the way you do that is you come back to identity, just come down to identity. Just come down to identity. I've clicked identity, it's just opening another page. One is fully loaded, I'll pull it over to this screen so that you can see where to see deleted user and the option to permanently delete a deleted user. So usually it's a question that you'll be asked, how do you permanently delete a user? So this is the account and then um hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on i'm sharing the content that i'm not supposed to bring up
Just hold on, let me see. Nope, 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 nope. I'm trying to just, it's opening another browser. So just hold on for me. Let me pick this account. It's not even coming up there for me. So let me just, um, let me click on it again. So I just wanted to show you where to delete a user permanently. Why is this? Let me bring the URL here. There are lots of a lot of stuff going on. It's refreshing on the other browser. So, uh, but what what will happen is okay. Let me just quickly get. Let me just quickly get the email address of this user that is signed in here. So that I can sign in as that user. So let me go to. I'm just trying to get the the admin users detail, active users, and then. I want to go to. Joseph, who is signed in here. I'm not sure why. This is opening another sign. So just give me a sec. Okay, so uh, this is the users. This is the users account. So what I was trying to tell you about alias, you see this alias. So if I send an email to Joseph, uh, Joseph at Joseph.fso at 5k1 pgd, this is going to come to my mailbox. If you also send email to J7F at this, it will also come to me because this is also my alias, as in is it means the same thing that if you don't want to send an email to this, you can send. I'm coming. Let me check something. Fabricam. Fabricam.com. Trying to check something. Is it fabricam.com? No. Coming. Let me check if K A M Fabricam dot com. Yeah, sure. You see this this is I type fabricam dot com and it gave me it brought me here, right? Um uh, if I type Pontoso dot com it also going to take me to this same place. You see here, I typed fabricam.com. It took me to www.microsoft.com. I type, um, what was it again? Contoso.com. It brought me to this place. So www.microsoft.com is same thing as contoso.com. Is same thing as fabricam.com. So what I mean is that if you look at this place, Uh, just hold on. Let me see. I hope this is not going to be okay. Let me bring this here. So, Contoso, Contoso.com, Fabricam.com. That is not C, it's K, Fabricam.com. And uh, our aliases of are aliases of um, Microsoft.com. So if you are browsing Microsoft.com, look at it. Then it's going to give us this, of course. Let me just remove this. Microsoft.com is going to bring us here. Now look at what I'm typing. Fabricam, fabricam.com is going to take me to this same page. Fabricam, there's no C here. Fabricam.com is taking me here, right? Then if I type contoso.com, it's also going to land me on this same page. The reason is because these are aliases of each other. So what it means is that if I'm sending an email from any mailbox to this JDS at microsoft.com, it's going to get delivered to this guy. 
so that was the point I was trying to raise. So I'm trying to sign into the Entra Admin Center. So just understand what I'm trying to do because I have a lot of um, signings on this machine. So it's just moving to other browsers. But when I bring up the Entra Admin Center, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm trying to see. This should be it. OK, so that user that we deleted, test user one, I'm going to see him in deleted user. So you come to this page. If you click on here, if you go here on your own screen now, if you click on identity here, it's going to bring up this page for you. This is called the Entra Admin Center. So if you look at here, you're going to see Entra Admin Center. So it can just be a tricky question. Where, how do you permanently delete a user? So what you do when you come to Entra Admin Center, we will still get there. So you click on this, and then you see deleted users. This is the only place where you can permanently delete user. Yes, you have deleted users both in M365 Admin Center and the Entra Admin Center. But the difference is that in Entra Admin Center, you can permanently delete a user, but in M365 Admin Center, you can only soft delete. So I'm just going to do this so that you can see the two differences. Now let's come back to this, please. Let's come to deleted users in, in uh, M365 Admin Center. And here is Entra Admin Center. For here, the only option I have is to restore, but here, I have option to permanently delete a user, right? And uh, I have, yeah, I have option to permanently delete a user and I also have option to restore. Restore is here, restore is here, right? But permanently delete is not here in, you see, admin.microsoft.com, but in entra.microsoft.com, you have option to permanently delete. So but if you delete only from here and you wait, after 30 days, this user will get permanently deleted from here. But if you want to rush it so that it just goes, perhaps you want to create another user with that same name, you will just come here, hit on this place, and it will tell you that all data for this user will be irrevocably deleted. Are you sure you want to continue? And if you click OK, the guy will just get out and user successfully permanently deleted. So you can see that it's still showing up. If I do a refresh, I'm expecting it to go. OK, already the, the user principal name is just showing an object. So let's refresh and see. But what it means is that that user has been, perma has been permanently deleted, and that user is no longer in that directory anymore. So that is how to permanently delete a user. All the data of that user is now gone. There is no way you, you want to restore the user. So if you refresh, nothing, nothing, nothing is going to come. So, so that is this is called hard delete. The first delete that you did here is called soft delete um, that you already know here. So that is how to delete a user. And now if you come to active user again that we are. And then you go to delete user. You know, I selected the user I wanted to delete. And I came up here, like I did this. And I came up here to delete. And it asked me these questions, right? Now, another thing I can do is that instead of doing that, I may not, I may not be able to select the user I want to delete. I may just come to this place and see delete a user. And if I say delete a user, it's just going to give me option to now search for which user do you want to delete. If there are few, I can just scroll down and see the user I want to delete. If there are very many, I can just click on here and search for the user that I want to delete. Let's say I want to delete this user that we created yesterday, Mama Gold. I will just come here, see select, selected user one, and then it will take me through the other rounds of delegating the mailbox also. So if I don't want to give anything to anybody, I just click on delete. And then it will tell me that it is on assigning the license, and I should not I should not close until it finished deleting this user. So that's what is happening here, right? 
Now, Mama Gold has been deleted. You can restore Mama Gold from the deleted user within 30 days. So license has been unassigned, so it will be available now in my tenant. Power Automate has been unassigned, and this license has been unassigned from the user, and the user has been deleted. So that is just a very simple step of deleting a user. If you are not interested in having access to the mail content. Now, if you come to this place, I'm expecting an email telling me that uh, user one shared mailbox has been, I mean, mailbox has been delegated to me, you know, so I should have the prompts ideally. So let me see if that email had come in earlier to Joseph, right? So that's important that I check. So from your end, um, you can, now let me see what is here. Your, your admin has been added. Okay, now look at the welcome. Your admin has added you to the test user one shared mailbox. So it's just telling me that, yeah, guy, you now have access to test user one shared mailbox and these are just um information that i just have to know hi the admin the admin of your team has added you to the following shared mailbox address now test user one this try it since you are now a member the shared mailbox address will automatically appear on your outlook app go to outlook and check the ad you know if you don't see the shared email folder wait a couple of minutes Close, close, then restart the Outlook app. All emails sent to up in the in this folder. So it's just going to generate a separate folder. So it's saying that send message from the shared mailbox in the Outlook new, then the message would show above to the bottom. Click on from this. So this is just telling you now if you want to send a new mail, if you want to send a new mail, you can select it, especially when you are on that Outlook. So you can click down here. Um, and in Outlook on the app, you have option to select the mailbox from which you are going to send from, right? So that is the message you get to notify you that you have been added to a shared mailbox. So um, you can, if you want to do a test, um, you can try it out, okay? So that is about deleting user. This is just to re refresh, right? And the next item is about reset pass.
Okay. Oh, sorry. I had network breach again as usual. So sincere apologies. Confirm that you can hear me again. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So, so I was trying to speak about the reset password option that we we'll have here. So the reset option, the reset password option is used when you have a user, right? This user has reached out to you that he can no longer sign into his application. He can no longer sign into the portal, right? So what you do is to um, either come to reset password Because it's that good to reset password and click on reset this way. So what you do is, yes, the user who reached out to you, you want to reset for the user. Let's say you want to, I think we did something about Jones yesterday, um, maybe Jane Mo, and then you select this user. And then what you want to do is you want to reset this user's password. Let's say the user complains to you that he has forgotten his password or his account has been compromised and you want to change the password to sign into this account. This actually is not the best form to do it if the account is compromised. I'm going to show you what to do when the account is compromised. But what I'm doing here is if this account, right, the user cannot remember the password and then you want to, you know, generate a new password for the user. You can either say that it should require this user to change their password when they are first signed in. And you can also say that you want to email this um, signing information to, so to an email address. Of course, you can put an, an email address that you want to have here for you to send it to, but require that the user you know, changes his password when he's trying to first sign in, like you're creating the user afresh. You just hit on reset. And then it's going to give you the user's password now that the user is going to use to sign in. So if he uses this password and then this email address, then he's going to be able to sign in. Because I don't want to expose this user's password, I will just quickly do something so that I can change it to what I want. So I'll just come here, go to this, then do office.com because somebody who watches this video later can decide to try to sign in and it's going to work for him or her because this user's password has not been changed, but I'm just coming here. I'm just coming here and I'm just going to sign out as this user. Let's just hold on for it to fully load. And then I'll just hit on sign in with another account. And then uh, because I have changed that password, I'll just come here, add, and then I would type this and then and then go to this and then put this and then do this. So it will request that I paste the old password or the current password, which is this password and then new password. Then this. And then this user is now going to be signing in with that new password. So it's going to work definitely. So the user is just in, so I'm not interested in that. So that's how to change user's password from this general point. Now, how do you set, a, let's say for example, a user reports that he can no longer, that his account has been compromised. Now, these are the things you can do. First, that you want to do is to sign out the user from all sessions. That is the first thing you want to do. Like if the user is available to sign in now, so you sign out of all sessions. So what this does for you is that this will initiate a one time event that will sign the person out of all Microsoft 365 session across all devices. And then it can take up to 15 minutes for the process to complete. The person will be able to the person will be immediately able to sign back in. Sorry, this person will be able to immediately sign back in unless you have also blocked their signing status, right? So what this does is that it signs the user out. If I click here now, see, sign this user out of all sessions. Then we have initiated a sign out of the, of the user. It may take some time to sign out the user from all sessions. Of course, we've been told that in 15 minutes time, this user is going to be completely signed out of all the sessions 
or all the devices that he signed into. Now, if, for example, this account was compromised and it was reported to you, so what you would do is to first of all go and hit on sign out of all devices and you come here to hit on reset password and the same thing that you did that time you also do here so if you click on reset now it's going to reset the password yeah i can even reset it and block signing because i know this screen is going to be shared to the public domain and i don't want anybody to sign into this user so let's say for example we want to compromise this user's password the new user's password now is this one of course thank you you have been able to see successfully you that is viewing this video right now but i want to take the other measure i'll come back to the user i know what i can do i will block signing for this user so blocking signing what it means is that blocking someone prevents anyone from signing in as the user so and it is good idea when you think that their password or their username have been compromised like what i've done on this screen now this user's password and email address has been compromised. If anybody watches this video, you will be able to sign in. So when you block someone, it immediately stop new signings. All right, you can't sign in newly into the account. And for they are signed in, I mean places where they are already signed in, they will be automatically signed out of their M365 service within 60 minutes. But of course, since we have hit on signing from the other side, I mean, sign out of all sessions, then it's going to sign the user out within 15 minutes. And in 60 minutes, this uh, this user cannot initiate a new sign in. And then we can decide to, but this won't stop the account from receiving emails and doesn't delete any data. So you just hit on this block, this user sign in, and I click on sign, click on block. So now that I've done that, now that I've done this one, I would have even taken charge of or taking note of the password before I set this, these changes. Now that this user has been blocked signing, if I go in any form and I want to, I want to use, I want to, I'm resetting this password now. Let me now try to sign in as this user and let's see what happens. So this is his email address and this is his password, right? So if I come here, I think I'm signed in somewhere as him. Okay, let's not stress. Let's just quickly put new and then let's do office.com. And then we we'll come back here. Remember, this is Jomo where we're signed in. So we just want to set this or uh, switch to signing with a different account and let that come up here. And then we can paste that user's email address and password and try to sign in as that guy. And you see that because I have this, I have um, blocked the user signing, then it is not going to go through. Let's see what happens. Um, sign in. So let's see. You can see your account has been blocked. Contact your support person to unlock, unlock it. Then try again. You are never going to be able to sign in because that account has been blocked because we noticed that the account has been compromised. So if the hacker guy is happy that, yes, he has been able to get something, yet he will not be able to sign in. This one that you see signed in here is the JMO that we had already signed in earlier. So that guy is never able, is never ever going to be able to sign in because his account has been compromised. So what am I even doing? I'm trying to just do that once again, just for you to see what happens, right? Um, so sign in with a different account, uh, just waiting for it to load. This, and then I just do this. This is email address, this, and then the temporary password, this. So you that is thinking that you've been able to get hold of my user's email and password is not going to work. Reason is that I have disabled that user. I have blocked the user signing. So the only time I'm going to be, I'm going to allow this user signing is now, I'm going to click on unblock signing. So if I do this, and then I, I click on this and I will do this. This user is going to be able to sign in. This user is going to be able to sign in now. So let's try, let's give it a try. New in private. So let's just do office. 
does come. Now that I have unblocked that user from sign, signing in. If he still cannot sign in now, he's just thinking it should, but I'm expecting that he should be able to sign in now. So let's see this, 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 this. And then let's apply his password. This, of course. Yeah, so you see that he's able to sign in. And I'm just going to change his password so that nobody who has seen this password will be able to sign in. Okay, yeah, that user is signed in. So that is how to change user's password. If it is not user, the account gets compromised. If you work in help desk, a lot of time users will come to you and Okay, so Paul, sorry again. I don't know. Um, I like I have to try Airtel out in my area this time because I think Glow has failed. MTN is also failing, but it's all good. We can always try to meet up. So confirm that you can hear me, please. Can you speak to confirm that you can hear me? I cannot hear you in case you are speaking. You can just drop a chat to indicate that you can hear.
Can you hear me, Paul? Okay, good, 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 good then. Okay, so I'll just share my screen again for, I think it's 10 p.m. already, but I will just use this to summarize what I'm trying to tell you. So um, in the midst of all this, I would, I would try to summarize now. Um, we've been able to come into active users, and then we have seen this, we have seen this, we have seen um, deleted users now, you see reset password. So um, the next thing we may just, excuse me, this is not so, yeah, deleted users and then we see reset password. The last one here. What's this now? So the very last thing here is um, the export users. So export users, as the name implies, is to get the list of all the users in your organization. So how you do it is just to click on export and say export could take some time depending on the number of the users in your tenants. Yeah, I don't have much, so I don't expect it to take too long to get it for me. So it's already, it's already made available. So what I can do is just to click on the Excel sheets. And then what I would do is, you see the Excel sheet is here. It will just open it for me. These are all the users that I have in my tenants. I need to tell me they are block credentials. They are not blocked. So if they were blocked, we already know what's called blocked users now. You see um, the city of the user, the country where they are, you have some in Nigeria and the other in the United States, their departments, their display name, their first name, their last name, their last directory sync. This only happens if they are on-premise users. Then their last name. Remember this smart guy is what we created yesterday. Pepe Clerk, we created this guy and just others. Then you can have the last password change. You can see their license assignment detail. Then you can see their licenses that are assigned to them. Then you should go further. You can see their mobile number for those that have. Then authentication token, their object ID. Um, you can just move on and on and on to see the other features. The office phone number, their password never expires. Then their phone number, postal code, preferred location. Then you can just go on and on and on their proxy addresses. And then, so this is a summary of all the users that I have in my tenant. So it is done from what is called export users. So in case you have an assignment in your office and your assignment is, is to get the, is to get the email address of, is to get the email address of the users in your organization. It's simple. It's just to come here now and then just come here. Um, yeah, this also doubles as their proxy addresses, right? So by the user principal name, this is it. So you can just copy and then you just come here. You can do control V and you can see, oh, this is all the email address of the users have in organization. So like at a go, right? So this is their email addresses. So it's as simple as that. And you see that one thing is common at, after at everything is the same thing, right? So that is how to, that is how to, that is how to export users that you have in your organization. So that's we end this for us. So for filter, filter is used to, if you want to add filter now, let's say for example, add a filter and you want to, 
just select people, right? Let's say you want to select by filter, as the name implies, do is just for you to check the users you are looking for, their signing status, let's say signing allowed, and then we want to select that have power automates, and then we just add, yeah, the name, filter name. And then we can just add, we can just add that. So what filter does is just to select a segment of the users that you want to really, you want to really look at. So that that's what happens. Now, what that filter is doing for us is that it's only giving us those users that we have selected those attributes for. So as the name implies, filter, you can see that this is still active users, but it's not all the users. So if you want to see all the users, you clear the filter and then you can see all the users. But if you are looking for users from a particular billing admins that are in your tenants, you can click, there is no billing admin. If you are looking for, for global admins that are in this tenant, there may just be one or two. Yeah, there are three that are here. So if you are looking for any other, admin, maybe licensed users, it's going to be all the users, all of them are licensed. So if you are looking for maybe you are, your own is looking for unlicensed users in your organization, you click on license, you will load those users that do not have license for you. So filter is actually doing the work of choosing a set of persons so it can make life easier for you. So that's what filter does. So you can explore all these options, go into active users and then add user user templates and all of those i think with this the only thing we have jumped refresh i told you is just to refresh this place in case you made any changes this is the only thing i jumped and i know why i jumped. You can conveniently say that we are done with them uh, we are done with uh, um active users right we are done with active users and everything around it so yeah, I'll just stop the recording now and if you have any questions, you can ask me.